Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable, and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out Tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. Today's video is going to be me discussing with you what it's like to get involved in competitive sport with your Belgian Malinois for the very first time. So a lot of you know that I have four Belgian Malinois and we do personal protection training, but I've never actually um, like professionally competed in any type of dog sport. And that is about to change. So I want to share my journey into competing in sport and what it kind of takes to get into that, why I've been hesitant to um, do this sooner, and um, just kind of share this journey with you guys. So if you're also interested in competing in sport and you're not really sure where to start, then this is gonna be a good video for you, so stay tuned. So if, like me, you want to get involved in a sport with your Belgian Malinois, but you're really not sure where to start or how to even sign up or, or what steps you take to begin this journey, then, you know, you're not alone and I'm going to help guide you through um, using myself as an example because I am brand new to this as well. So I'm going to share everything I can with you. Um, I'm going to obviously share my journey into PSA. So this is going to be for people interested in getting involved into the uh, Protection Sports Association. And of course that starts with actually having to go sign up and become a member and pay your dues. Now I wanna say that this is $70 for an annual membership. Um, I will put the links to the website down below so that if you're interested, you can go check that out and uh, they will have the, you know, all the resources there to explain what the sport is all about, where you can pay your dues, you can download the PSA rule book and handbook. All of that information is there. It's a great resource to help get you started to understand what it is you need to do. So again, I will link all of that information in the uh, description of this video. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is find a club or find a trainer. So um, there are PSA clubs that are registered PSA clubs that you can go and be a part of, and they will help train and get ready and actually host trials. So that is ideal. Now, my personal trainer, Courtney Robbins, doesn't actually have a PSA club out at Global Canine, but that's okay. So we have one that's not terribly far away. I think I wanna say it's like an hour, hour and a half away. So that's pretty close. Um, so my plan is to actually be doing a lot of the training here at the house myself. I also have a standing appointment twice a week to work with my trainer, Courtney. And then when it comes time to trial, we will be traveling to the registered PSA club that is allowed to hold trials and actually score or entitle your dogs. So you might be wondering, where do I even find a PSA club near me? Like how, how do I get connected with a club so that I can do this type of training, get involved in this sport? 
And the website actually has a great resource. So they have a full directory of all the registered PSA clubs with them. They um, are searchable by state. So you'll be able to find a club, hopefully near you, and get all of that contact information. They give you the name, the email address, a phone number, even a website. Uh, if the club has one, all that information is going to be right there, making it pretty easy for you to connect with a club. Now, if you don't see a club that's available on that registry, then don't worry too much. Of course, they're not totally accurate and up to date. And there are clubs that I'm aware of that aren't on this website. So another great resource is unfortunately going to be Facebook. As much as I hate Facebook, um, there are tons of groups. You can just search PSA club and bring up a whole list of different clubs and try to find a place near you. So the actual competition is comprised of several different things. So of course there is a competitive obedience portion, which is gonna be some healing, some change of pace, a down in motion, um, you know, some distractions are gonna come into play. And of course all these things just get more and more difficult the higher the title is. There are also things like a bravery test. There's several different sins and protection scenarios with decoys um, that are also a part of the sport. And again, those get more and more difficult as you progress in the levels. One great way to kind of go get your feet wet and see just what exactly these routines look like is to just simply, while you're here on YouTube, after this video, go search PSA 1, PSA 2, PSA 3, and there will be lots and lots of videos of just what exactly these routines look like. So I'm actually gonna share a little footage um, that I took while I was out at my very first lesson. And this is just of some of the obedience portion that we're gonna have to work on with Storm. And these were just a few of our wins from that day and some things that we're gonna have to work on as well. One thing that I know that I'm struggling really hard with is I have a pattern in my mind of what I know I'm supposed to do and I'm not waiting for the judge to call out the commands. I'm doing it before the judge is calling the commands and that's gonna lose me major points. So I have to be really careful about not getting too ahead of myself. That's gonna be hard for me because I'm a, I'm a pattern oriented person. If I know what I'm supposed to do, we'll just shut up and get out of my way and I'll go do it. Um, so it's gonna be really hard for me to slow down and wait for instruction from the judge. I've, I've um, yeah, it's gonna be hard for me. Grab your leash. Done. Done. That's why I Nice, that was very nice. Very good. Put your leash in your other hand. Okay, this is gonna be your healing portion. Okay. Are you ready? Which cone am I going to? The to blue? the blue. Okay. Ready, begin. I don't mind you repeating commands here if you need to. Good. And then you can say good. Just no rewarding. Stop in the middle. Pop her into you. Pop her into you. Heal. Good. There you go. Down your dog. Uh huh. She's anticipating. Down. Good. Leave your dog. Go to the comp. Don't turn until they tell you to. Every command, wait until they tell you to. Slow. Slower. Normal. About turn. Exercise complete. Very nice. So some of you might be wondering why I decided to go with PSA rather than another sport like Schutzend or French Ring. And that's a very simple answer. Um, for me, this is just a very natural progression with my own protection dogs. Um, this is something that I think is well suited for me to step into a sport as a novice, as a beginner in competitive sports. And um, my dogs already have seen a lot of this training, so it's gonna be a lot of tweaking and getting them ready for the actual competition. But you know, these dogs are protection dogs, so a lot of that foundational groundwork and training has already been laid. And this will be a really easy transition for me to move into as a professional handler. 
um, where I'm going to see, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to reap rewards a lot sooner than if I tried to jump into a sport that I have very limited experience with some of the different dynamics of those sports. So for example, um, you know, if I was to do Schutzend, I would have to start learning from scratch as a complete novice how to get involved into tracking and, and training with tracking my dogs. And I, I literally know nothing about tracking. Um, PSA doesn't involve any tracking whatsoever. Um, another reason that I think sticking with PSA just makes sense for me and, and for my dogs specifically is because, you know, a lot of these dogs in Schutzend or French Ring um, are very equipment oriented dogs, meaning that they're not trained in true protection work as far as real life scenarios are concerned. Um, a lot of these dogs have never seen what a real life protection scenario looks like. They're only being trained on equipment, sleeves, suits, that kind of thing. And when you actually turn one of these dogs loose on someone with hidden equipment, they won't actually bite or stay engaged in the fight. So um, I almost feel like to do that with my dogs who are trained in real life protection scenarios would almost be kind of taking a step back from the things that are important to me why I initially got my dogs because that priority of being family protection dogs and an added layer of security is still um, you know, my highest priority as far as why I got involved with these dogs and that remains true. So PSA is just a very natural progression. That's why I chose it. So one thing I wanted to make sure that I touched on during this video was why I was so hesitant to get involved in any kind of sport with my dogs to begin with. Now, if you follow me on social media, over on my Instagram, I actually kind of shared my feelings about that hesitation. And um, the reason being that I feel like a lot of these competitive dog sports associations and communities and clubs are just not very welcoming to beginners or to outsiders. But you know, it really did kind of seem to be a pretty equal mix of men and women both that were very intimidated by getting involved in these clubs and had very negative experiences the first time or trying to break into a club of any kind, whether it's PSA or you know, in any kind of club where you know, you're all working towards the goal of, of competing with your dogs. And um, that's really discouraging. I was really discouraged to hear that because it was exactly the same reason that I did not get involved much, much sooner. I have always had it in my mind that I wanted to get to the point where I could compete with one of my dogs. Um, I've always had that goal in the back of my mind for years now. And I've been kind of feeling stuck, kind of like, you know, just, just like we're not really doing anything new or anything fresh. I'm not really doing anything that's challenging me or progressing me as a handler or challenging my dogs really in, in, in some new way that keeps it fresh and fun. And I've been feeling that way now for months, for, for months and months and months. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to do this much sooner. And unfortunately, the reality is, is that these communities are just not very welcoming to beginners, to new people. And this is for several reasons. I think that a lot of these clubs remain very exclusive in the sense that they have a name or a brand to their club where they don't want to bring people in who aren't doing very well, getting very good scores, um, you know. And of course, a beginner is not going to bring that into the club, right? They're still learning. And so there seems to be a little pushback from bringing new people into clubs and onto the field because you can almost tarnish the name of that club if you don't go out and do really well on the field. Um, another reason I think that these communities are a little unwelcoming is because there seems to be a camaraderie or you know some kind of brotherhood that forms, some fellowship that takes place where they form a social circle. And you know what it's like when you have a clique, you have certain number of people and those are your people and anytime some new kid wants to come sit at the lunch table you're like eh, no you know um, and 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 that's kind of the vibe that you get from these communities unfortunately so you know I think there's a few things at play as to why these communities seem really hard to break into why these clubs aren't more welcoming to people who want to get into the sport um, you know is a little mysterious, but I think we all have some theories. Those are a couple of mine. But regardless, 
something's off. Something's not right because it wasn't just me. I had an overwhelming response from people who shared the same exact hesitation because of their experiences um, when they initially tried to join a club. And so, you know, all I can say about that is don't let it stop you. My mentality in moving into this space, into this new challenge, is very simple. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I'm just going to worry about working my dog, training my dog, having fun with my dog, challenging us in a new way. And when we hit the field, if we make some friends, great. And if we don't, that's okay. That's not what I'm really there for. It, it would just be an added bonus. That's how I'm going to approach this. Um, so, you know, that being said, I hope that if you are hesitant like I was, that maybe me sharing my journey into PSA here on this YouTube channel will help encourage you as well. I feel like, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. All right, guys, I'll see you when I see you.